Okay, so this is what it's about, is it, Buster? Look, these holes, right? These holes I thought were made for comfort. They're actually not. These holes are for storing this stone. Yeah? And it goes in like that, look. Isn't that right, Bust? Is that it? Is that what you want? See that? Hmm? Hmm? You want it? You want it? <laughs> no! No, no, no. <laughs> no. What? You. You. You want this? Do you, do you want. No? Do you want it? Hey! Is that tail wagon? Can you buy that with money? A tail wagon of a dog? No, I don't think so. Hey? What's this? What's this? No! You have to wait. Oh. Oh. Are you getting impatient? Are you getting impatient? Oh. Oh. You got it? Okay. Yep. Hey? Yes. Come on then. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Okay, so look where we are. We're, we're in here under the arch of the bus. We're back in here, guys. That was a little introduction as to how many of us is actually in around this wheel arch and what it takes to get it done. Now, go on then. Okay. Welcome back, guys. Um, so, yeah, am I glad I got this little camera? Because there's no way uh, three of us, that's me, a big DSLR camera and Buster in around a wheel tub. It just wouldn't be possible. So yeah, I've got my little camera here and we're going to get on and we're going to paint. Um, well, we're going to protect, first of all, paint as much later, but we're going to protect all this metal from rusting out again in the future. So we're going to put um, crust on first. And that's going to eat away all this rust. Now there is no rust to eat away because I've cleaned it all up. As you can see, a little shine on it there. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to put some crust on there, brush it all in, and let it dry. Um, it doesn't need a second coat. And then we'll paint it with Galva Fried, which means, well, that's it really. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to start putting the pieces back together again. And we're going to start building up this this um, bottom of the bulge panel area. Hi guys, so here's the little piece that you would have seen in the last video um, that we made. And there was a lot of questions as regards where does it go and what's it for and what's it all about. And I did say that this piece here, this lip, where we turned it at 90 degrees, folded it, um, was critical or at the very least it was very important so now we're going to offer it up this is the bulge panel this is the bottom of the bulge panel i've mentioned it enough times so this is pretty much where it goes right so it'll be a small little bit of fettling to get it in perfect position but there you can see now that yeah now it'll have to be pushed in a, in a uh, and pushed out here and there as we go and tack it because it's going to move when you tack things it when things uh once something gets tacked it uh it positions itself it gets pulled in directions you know that are untold until you actually put that tack down there but uh critically this is where i wanted to show you this is the the fold right right here and this is in line with you know uh manufacture it comes out here. I did mention it in the earlier videos. So it kicks out, this piece kicks out here. And that was the idea of the 90 degrees. Now that matches up with this and here. So basically what we have here now is, this is the closing in of it. And what we'll be doing now is, uh, uh, which needs to be done also, is make a little piece that goes in here with a fold on it, again 90 degrees, uh, a little fold and it's like a blanking plate that goes here. Right, and that's that's it. 
just goes to there this has got to be chamfered off a little bit but that's the lay of the land as regards this closing piece also i explained in the in the final bits of the last video uh, i said to you that i was going to cut the um top hat uh and just it'll go along here and it'll get seam welded all the way along and um cleaned back so the first thing we have to do now is this is all being cleaned up in here as you can see there's like a shine on it and it's really solid and so is the outrigger and the bottom part here so what we're going to do now is um i'm going to put crust on here like i said and um and uh galvo fried and then after that um i think there's some um in some parts i'll be putting some uh, well true primer and then we're going to go and close all this up so that's it for now um we'll get back to you in a minute okay guys um i've got a little uh got a little crust which is this product here K-U-R-U-S-T, Crust, converts rust. And also, like I said, puts a seal on the metal. Now, all I've done is I've poured into this little container just a little bit, um, like three tablespoonfuls. That's a table, you know. And I've got my little brush. And what we do here is we just paint this stuff on. So... Into all the nooks and crannies. Um, yeah, I've been using this stuff. You only need a small bit, it's got really good coverage. Um, as you can see now. And um, the secret with this is not to mix it, you know, not to use the brush back into the bottle type of thing. Uh, put it out into a, a little container, like I said, about three or four tablespoonfuls, just just a small amount. And uh, ideally with a small little brush like this as well, so you can you can be accurate about where you want to put it. And after a while, after a short while indeed, you see this stuff turning black. We want to get it into the seams because that's where sometimes water gets in, you know. And uh, just make sure that it really gets in where it needs to be because. This will neutralize, neutralize the rust. Uh, and that seal is very important because that seal stops. Stops rust in the future. This is absolutely perfect down there. There's no rust at all, but it's no harm. It's no harm to get this down there. Let me protect it even more. Yeah. Uh, we want them to last, don't we? We want them to stay around. Now this, as regards welding, is a contaminant. Okay. So, you'll see how I deal with that and probably I won't get all this done in this video because and for any of you that um, have watched any of my videos so far and you haven't maybe given it a like or subscribed to the channel, now is a good time while I'm painting this. It's you know what this is going to be like, so just 
snip down there on your phone or whatever and click the like if you like it and if you've enjoyed the content thus far and also um, you might like to subscribe and stay with us on this project and see it done come in completion and there's a whole pile of other things the welding tips and tricks etc etc but uh yeah for some people you know they don't um and then they may never get back to it again and for whatever reason you know whatever your reasons sometimes just like you just watch something i've done it i've just watched something i think geez where was that or who was that or what was that about that you know that'd be interesting and sometimes it's gone and you don't get back there again or so if you've just found it by chance or whatever um yeah give us a like click the subscribe it doesn't cost anything nothing at all maybe if learning you learning to weld or get tips and tricks on how to restore your VW or any classic car for that matter they're all the same there's no real difference the metal rots out right and that's basically why it's a restoration uh, yeah there's no more to be said on it really Like I was saying before, this this is um, in here. This guy, that's your um, your rail. That your the bottom of your sliding door. It's your sliding door rail. Now all of these areas in here, they were never painted from the factory. Yeah, they, they had like a, a from what I gather was like a kind of a, a coating on them. All right, maybe it could have been zinc or whatever, but. They were never, you know, obviously they weren't painted because they were all, but now it's not, this is the time now to flood this area with crust. And I'll also be putting another product on, it's Galva Fried. Yeah, I've mentioned it already, I think. I'm putting Galva Fried on as well. But now is the time to get all this in there. And then it's, it's just drip and soak, you know. Because that seal, I keep saying it, I keep mentioning about the seal, but the seal is really, really, you know, it's really impressive. I put this stuff on the front of um, an old um, bus uh, one time and I put it out. It was at the bonnet of the, you know, it was actually, a, it wasn't a VW, it was a, a Talbot camper. And I never got round to painting it. It was out in the yard and I left it. And I have several examples after that. I've done the same thing with uh, Galvafroid. And these are the very reasons I, I use this stuff because I've tr it's tried and tested as, as you know I'm, I don't have any affiliation or you know I'm not trying to sell this stuff to anybody I'm just showing you what I use and what I've found to be um, really good beyond my expectation as regards metal you know and um, the preserve of metal beyond my expectations what I'm saying so and you know yeah I can be hard to please yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and all the rest of it, so everything has to be right. No point in doing it if it isn't. But what I'm saying is I put this stuff out, um, left the bonnet outside, it was attached to the camper van, and I couldn't believe, right, that uh, this turns black, like I said earlier, you can see it happening here now, you know, and there's no real, it's not getting as dark as it can do because there's nothing to you know, there's nothing to eat up. There is no rust on this one, really. It's clean and we're just preserving it now for the future. Um, but I left the stuff outside. Obviously, the, the bonnet was attached to the Talbot. And, um, geez, I, I, I remember a year later, and there was this, like, um, there was a, a film, a coating that this created. And it was my first time using this stuff. And I just couldn't believe how the weather or, you know, and we get kind of bad winters, you know, we're noted for lots of rain in Ireland. So, you know, we, we get a lot, quite a lot of rain, you know, and um, 
Jeez, the the bonnet was still like the bonnet was still just how I'd done it like 12 months earlier and I'd left it and I, I, I finished up getting another bonnet actually because the bonnet was too bad but this was just to hold it for a while you know and um, I couldn't believe it you know every place where I had put this product it, it was just like it just stopped the rust but not alone that it's it, it stopped it from growing and, and becoming rusty again like I said there's a film and that on the on the mild steel on clean steel like on this here if you put that on there that's enough uh, you know you can throw it out in the rain throw it out in the yard and leave it there and come back in six months time and I guarantee you it's not going to get rusted so that's the film I'm talking about now everything else that goes on top of that is a bonus so like I was showing you up on the wheel arch um, I've put galva fried which is almost it's a, it's a galvanized paint as such um, and once you go down that road as, you know this is my experience um, having dealt with metal all my life and once you start like gal galvanizing stuff for in a paint form then I think you've all your you know you have all your angles covered now I, I could actually go on and say like well I've actually tried the more modern or some of the stuff that's out there nowadays and you know but I'm not going to dish anything you know what I'm saying it's, it's not my style yeah I'm just saying what I like and what I use. Um, yeah. These are really, really good products that I use all the time and that I can quite easily say, yeah, this stuff works. It does what it says on the tin, yeah? Oh, I think... Um, I can't show you in this container, but... I'm going to have to go on and use this up someplace else because there's lots left. Even three tables three tablespoonfuls was, was way too much for this little job. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want to just see all paint and so. past obviously guys and uh, before I go with the galva fried I'm going to take some measurements now and just basically cut up what I need so we have that top hat that I showed you and that's probably the furthest away point right over there so if we measure that we've got I'm gonna go to millimeters so 360 millimeters I'm going to cut it 360 and then I'm just going to take it down a little bit afterwards for snug fitting. So I'm getting 360 at the longest point. Okay, so I'll go off and get that cut.
Okay, guys. Just fettling and making sure that this is going to be an okay fit. So it looks okay. I've left on a previous video I said about leaving corners and some years now with a more trained eye will have spotted that I left because I could afford to I, and it helps because this is keyhole surgery I left the corner ok I'll get this out and show you that when you come along here I left this corner on again this is where you know this kind of stuff is critical to help you and your project along in a fashion where you don't kind of pull your hair out so the the reason was we could right sometimes you can't but if you can at all you take advantage of that opportunity that's what helps you you know less there's less stress involved you know when you start when you start trying to weld stuff and it won't and it's it's, it, it's not welding for you and etc and then when you when you dress it up and you've taken too much weld off, it was like this piece here. I was getting pinholes. There's actually two pinholes left there. But the meat around them is okay. So, you know, but my overall point is the corner. Leave a corner on if you can. I've explained it in the other vi in the videos previous. So, um, that's probably another good thing. You know, if I'm going to keep... Otherwise, I'll be always saying these things. But, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind saying things, you know. I'll keep saying them, and, you know, until the cows come home, but leave your corner, and this is the advantage of it. On this previous video to this, we were talking about how to make corners, and how to weld corners and create them. Uh, this is why I'm saying I left this corner here, right? Because I could leave it here, because the condition of it was okay. but uh, And it would make it more difficult for us, because we'd have had to be kind of welding, and I would have had to cut out more of the floor, the cargo floor to create that corner if you know what I'm trying to say because I would have been doing it from out here you see it's still possible to do this if the top is good but I've explained enough about that in the last video I'm not going to go back into that all of you know all the different things it's all about um you know a lot of it is about uh weighing up the situation before you go cutting and I'm a firm believer as well also guys with projects you know, there's no point in going around the bus with um um a cut off wheel you guys call it or a cutting disc I call it and just cutting off everything. It, it, number one, um, you're weakening the whole main structure. I definitely don't agree with it. You know, it's the wrong way to go about it. It's a nice job, yeah. Cut everything off, blah de blah. You know, you're losing rigidity. You're losing everything. It's you don't do it that way. You, you take on one repair at, at the beginning. You take on one repair at a time, and get that done, and then move on to the next one. And also, like I said. In that very famous video now, um, where to where to look for rust before buying a, t uh, a, a Vanagon or a T25, etc. Is what I do is I start at the front. Start at the front, which I've done there. You can see the the cab floor is done now, and there's a little bit I might add it to this video to show you underneath and how I'm going to dress that up. It needed a, sh um, a shoulder welding in. Um, yeah, so. I like to talk when I'm working as well sometimes and then other times I'm completely switched off and no one say anything. As you follow along you you get to know what I'm like, but I'm never cranky, right? I try not to be angry. You need patience, right? That's another thing you need. Lots of patience. Lots of uh fitting up and you know, taking it out and and the more patience you have the the better the finish actually. Because see it's all about that I don't know if you can see this corner guys I, I've like I said at the beginning there, there's three of us in here under this wheel arch there's me there's the camera which is you guys and then there's Buster and he's all over me <laughs> so look that's what we're talking about right um, I've got to put Galva fried inside all around at the back before I go any further with this so I may even just leave that till the next video I'm not sure yet we'll see how the how the clock is going um, these 40 minute videos I'm actually thinking of maybe cut them down to 15 or 20 minutes because I think I can do enough in that time that just gives you the you know uh, there was a, a weld here that came through if you remember on the other side on the previous video uh, I just took that down a bit there so you can always dress welds up from the other side as well okay that's part of that 
Um, so yeah, I just weld it down around there, weld it there. I'm going to every, so what I'll be doing here is I'm going to put a, a spot here, a spot here, a spot here, every inch, thereabouts, and give it a cool move along. So I'll be putting a spot here, and just for you guys and right now, and I'll be putting a spot here. And then I'll be putting a spot in the middle. So there's three spots completely, like six inches away from each other, okay? So we're not, heat is, again, I can't, I can't really reiterate enough how important um, distortion slows you up towards the end of your game and maybe sometimes destroys your whole piece. Heat is critical, yeah? So like I say, one there, I'll go over here, one there, and one here. Then I go in the middle. And then again I go there, you know, and stay the furthest away you can. And then when I, actually I will show you how to get it down then and polish it and finish it. Because remember, there's a skin coming. The last skin to cover this now is going to be about 5mm off the bottom here. So, I'll just show you this. This is the bulge panel coming down here. And it finishes right there. And I, like I said to you, I've I've uh, scribed a line there, like a straight edge line, and I've cut it. And when I cut it right, I'm cutting into the back of the cargo floor. And the cargo floor will go up to about here, look. Okay, so that's the other side now. The cargo floor folds here, and it goes up to about there. So anyway, you can, here's your bulge, and there's the extreme bend here, extreme fold. So anyway, you can... You know, by looking at it, you'll see, right, that uh, the cargo floor, by putting your hand around here, you'll just see. Take your hand around and put it around. The B post there. And we'll come to that line. Okay. So this is a straight This is a straight line that I've put in there. Sorry, I've lost my train of concentration, but that's a straight line that I've cut in there. And you could go higher. You could go up to even here with your straight line, you know. Um, so... Yeah, you don't cut all the way through, you just cut the one mil thick. Yeah? Leaving the cargo floor fold, if you notice. Yeah? Um. See? So you can see the height of that there. And where the holes are for the spot welding. And when we put that in there, see? Look, it's up to here, see? So that's it now, look. There's some good information there for anybody wanting to do this. That's really good. You know, you can see it clearly, yeah? The cargo floor folds and goes all the way up to there. So anyway, you can cut, if you can, like, off of here, cut a straight line, get a ruler or whatever, make it as straight as you can. The next skin that'll be coming on here, guys, is just a piece of, a long piece And it'll be coming to like there. So that'll be roughly cut that piece. It'll be a piece, 50 mil or so, all the ways along here. And it'll be, it'll be plug welded like that. And apart from the plug weld, that's factory finish. And it'll be coming to about there, look. And that'll be the finish of this one, yeah? So, it'll be good to see it. Yeah, I think that's me for this week. So if I keep going, this thing will be 40 minutes long again. Um, yeah, that was the thing I saw as well. It's like, um, people that view these videos, I don't know nowadays how people view videos, but it's like, there's like, it's about four or five minutes in total of what the actual video is 45 minutes long, so. Um, and apparently that's, I've been speaking to other people, and that's the kind of stats that come back from um, from YouTube, you know, just the viewing time. And for any of you that didn't know that or can't be bothered with the analytics and all that, it's like, yeah, videos, I don't know how people watch videos that are 40 minutes long and how you guys get anything from it if you're not, but anyway, I'm not dictating to anybody, to, you know, to how you want to watch a video or whatever. But it's just that uh, if I watch the video like that, I, I'm sure I'd be missing stuff and I'd have to be going back in and out in and etc. So, 
that's a little idea I have. I'm just going to keep them like, you know, and, and just continue on like this, you know, that you can see where I'm going with it. And um, there's been no sparks on this one, but like I said, I don't know whether I'm going to keep going with this or, yeah, make it really, make it a 40 minute video or maybe a 20 minute video is enough. Okay, we'll continue anyway. <laughs> 